Second firing of the pistol is related to the incident. I do. Picture. Yeah, it shows. There's one in the... There's a bullet... And they said a bullet wound? A bullet wound in the glass. And a bullet in Ed Edgeworth. But that wouldn't make sense, because if he was shot... And it went through him and then through the door... He wouldn't slump down there. He'd slump down against the door. Surely. So, yeah, there. Look at this photograph. Oh my god, every time he says that, it makes me think of the Nickelback song. <laughs> Look at this graph! There's a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. I like how there's triple dots. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Y Your Honor, please, please get a clue. Show the judge the contradiction in the photo. You got it. Oh my god, that's really, really hard. Eh. There. Whew. As should be ob obvious, the contradiction is here. I see. A bullet hole in the door. Your Honor. Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. I really like the triumphant music. So good. Order, order. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart, the other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. But Mr. Wright? But who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. Okay. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary? That's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. This is, that is the truth of this matter, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. Yes, just something that was bullet shaped, and also fired from a gun. How weird. Order, I will have order. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly, that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It's highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. Cause I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. How did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? It... It looks like I was wrong. Nick, if the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. No, no. But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just, when I saw the photograph, I thought two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick, well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I'd like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, though that was not your intention? Yes, I did. Oh, no. He's confessing.
Very well. The statute of, limit statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying. But my, but my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Is the right? No objections. No! I have an objection. Objection! Your Honor, I... I object. Finger waggle. Oh yeah. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object? Hmm? Oof. Nick? I... I don't know. His case is perfect. Oh no. It must exist. Whoa, god, that's creepy. The second bullet. What? What did you just say? Nothing. The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. Hmm? I, uh... The, the, the second bullet, it, uh, it exists. What? But we've just heard proof that it did not exist. I, I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It, it's just, someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, the murderer. Oh my god. You can tell he's grasping because he's stuttering like, uh, uh, uh. The, the murderer? Then tell us, just who is this murderer? I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet. Why would he? Huh? First of all, how would he have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? Okay, he didn't need it. Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for that stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Um... The murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Had to take it. Had to take it. The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. If we recall what Edgeworth said, he said that after the first fire, uh, first shot was fired, he heard a scream. Which means a bullet hit someone. Mr. Wright? Y yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance what? Uh, maybe the bullet hit the murderer? That's what I mean. They heard the gunfire. They heard a scream, which means it hit somebody. It might not have passed through the skin. It already went through a window. Of the elevator. Oh, it already went through the door of the elevator. The bullet hit the murderer. Just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. You know? <laughs> Look at his face. It's like, mmm. Wait a second. I'm just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's what really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer himself was shot. And he left with the second bullet still inside. Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Yeah. I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean... The murderer came from outside, yes. Oh, the music. Bloody hell. The two men f The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges, and the bullet... Yep, the bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness, so the only memory he has... Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Hmm. Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it, deny it. No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. 
No one was wounded at the time of the incident? He's right, I can't think of anyone. Hey Nick. Huh? I just thought of something. Really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? I do. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was... Von Karma. Oh man. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem... dazed. Uh, no, no, Your Honor. Well? You have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it now? Yeah, I'll say it. Might as well. Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? The, 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 uh, my hands are shaking. The, the what? Von Karma. Von Karma? Ah, the cornered. I love for when it does that. Just the triple dots throughout the entire courtroom. You mean, THE Von Karma? The prosecutor? Sitting right there? Bah. You... don't object? Hmm. I see no need. Why honour this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident? Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go? Under the knife at, Mr. Wright. Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Oh dear. Alright. Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth? I know Von Karma. Perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Oh, hang on. Nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere. But where? It could still be in him. If he didn't get surgery, he could have just got the we the, the wound sealed, and that would be it. Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? Show evidence. <laughs> Alright, Von Karma, I'll prove it. I'll even use evidence I know- I'll even use evidence I know how you like it so much. But what? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... Mail Detector. Actually, is it that? Uh, I guess. I mean, it will detect a bullet. Well, Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery, leaving an evidence tri uh, trail. Trial. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it's unlikely that Bonkama performed surgery on himself. You... you don't mean... I do. There is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. Oh, oh my god, he's sweating! Wow, this is like Von Karma at his weakest. I refuse. You refuse? But refusing this means... You acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you? Oh ho ho! Watching Von Karma crumble like this is such a satisfying feeling. Order, order, order! 
Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the use or to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension on the, of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. Hmm. Oh, hoo -hoo. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Wonkama, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. And? There it is! It reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet! Mr. Von Karma. You. It was you. I was afraid this would happen. And so I remained silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. Hmm. But, Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? <laughs> I don't need to. I have no obligation to prove anything. It is you who must prove something here, Mr. Wright. Not I, Mr. Wright. Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. Actually, we do have one thing. We have the bullet. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What? You were close. One day apart away from freedom. You see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought you would have dug your own grave trying to convict Edgr Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. That's not it. God. There it is. It's taken from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. Still bears clear ballistic markings. That's... A bullet? Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. So if we take the bullet out of his shoulder... We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We can analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings match, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol, in other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. Does he have a breakdown, Mr. Von Karma? You will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma, does he have a breakdown? Oh my god, he does! Oh my god, awesome. All he did was smack the... Whatever the hell it is. I was gonna say desk. He just smacked what was in front of him. And then screamed. Because of the <laughs> injury in his shoulder. It, it must be why he only uses his left hand for everything. That scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait, I know. The elevator! Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air. I'll, I'll stop you. Stop breathing my air. Get away. And he threw the bullet, uh, bullet, the pistol. Get away from my father. Then you hear the bang. And there's his scream. Uwag! Hot oh, damn. It's that scream I heard in the elevator. Fifteen years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed. Whew! Mr. Von Karma. 
Oh, damn. <laughs> Edgeworth! <laughs> what the hell? Only you would dare defy me. That's so creepy. Jesus, so it was you. Oh dear. You and your father are my curse. Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record. And you. You left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade. Oh my god. I'll bury you. I'll bury you in my bare hands. Death. Death. What the fuck? Fifteen years earlier. Mr. Chief Prosecutor, I am sorry. On karma! It's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalised. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. <gasps> Edgeworth! And then he noticed they were in the elevator, unconscious. It was a shock like none I had ever known. Me. I don't know if it's penalised or penalised. Whatever. It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and f felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button and nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. The gunshot. It pierced my right shoulder. I was in pain, a horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. Oh wow, they must have literally just passed out. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny. Narco was using the same... He was using the same stock image from shooting on the boat. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Wow, what a dick. I don't know why he's tisking, he's just admitted to it now. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge? What? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now, end it. Very well. Oof. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later. Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. Whoo, boy. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty. For the second time in a row. Holy God. That was the last day of the trial, and it still took me a fucking hour. Jesus. That is all the court has adjourned. Jesus. Oh my god. Jeez. But now we go on to the final, the final case, which is one I'm really excited for. Because it's re it's so, it's totally different than anything else. And I love it. Alright, so there we are. Nick. Nick. We did it. Did you see his face? Monkama looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed. I gotta say, I'm impressed. Yeah, it was the last case of the GBA version. Case 5 was introduced exclusively for the DS. Oh my. It was pretty close, though. I was sure we had it. I know, I was on the, ver the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good memory. So, it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say it. H I know, I know. Try... thank you. I... I see. God, his face. Thank you, right. Y you're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. Oof. Sorry. I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. Dear, dear. I thought he was going to say whoosh. <laughs> whoosh. Gumshoe! Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. 
Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? Oh my god, I love Edge. Uh, not Edge. <laughs> I mean, I love every character, but Gumshoe's... I don't know, he's so likeable. See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm, I... I see. Haha, <laughs> woo! I... I feel foolish. Don't worry, take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Why the hell's Lotta here? What the fuck? Hey, y'all. Lotta! Y'all were great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth. Oh, wait, of course she was here because she was part of this case. Congrats. Uh, thank y'all very much. Oh my god. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. What a phrase. You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, me? Oh, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? It's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Oh, Larry Butts. Oh, look at him. It's over, Nick. My life is over. But why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick, I'm not long for this world. You don't look sick. It's Keyonce. She She's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. She's leaving me behind. Oh my god, Larry. He gets... I don't get it. Wait, that's twice his girlfriends have gone to Paris. Wait, did she go to Paris? No, she didn't go... The first one didn't go to Paris. She went to New York. Never mind. Either way. <laughs> Yo, AG. There you are. Uh, yes. Here I am. Congrats, AG. Here, a little gift from me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts. You came al you come along too. <laughs> oh, I love how they always get his name wrong. Come along tonight too. My treat, pal. Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Y yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah? What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me. It's got money in it. Oh well, yeah. That's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? Huh? What a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. It's $38 exactly. N nick Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38. No. No! Larry, it was you? What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day, 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored. He came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. Huh. Oh my god. Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really right. I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this is sure an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth? Hmm? You should have told me. Now, now, Nick. It was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, I'd call you a good a goody two-shoes to the extreme. Yeah. And you get worked up too easily, too. Death. The death sentence for both of you. Man, if only I had known. <laughs> I'd have become a prosecutor. The same goes for me. Only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney, after all. Edgeworth. Want to switch, right? Hey, y'all, line up. I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time. Let's go. 
And after that, dinner on me. Yeah, I think this is what the, like, ending of the game would look like if you were playing the GBA version. Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Although Edgeworth was still in detention. Oh, ho. Oh. Do we get a picture? Oh, man. December 29th. Oh, we're back at the bloody office. Ooh. Oh, I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? It's still only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Oh! Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you, it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium. In training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth too. I wanted to help you. But I couldn't. I was useless. So I've decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. Wow, that's really sad music. Goodbye? What time is it? The first trains for the mountains have already left. To the station! Oh man, here we are. <laughs> Triple dots. I guess I'm too late. Hey. N Nick? Maya! So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And... I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Oh. Wait. What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes, only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. E evidence Show Maya some evidence to cheer her up. Yeah, the DL6 bullet. Boom! A bullet? Moncama was convinced he had taken all of the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Moncama. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, you better leave. So. Bye. Bye. 